Hello everyone, and welcome back. I hope you're all keeping well. Let me ask you a question. Is your kit ready to go? This lockdown won't last forever, and we'll be back on parade in no time. So I ask you, where are your boots right now? Are they in mum and dad's car? Are they in the garage? Are they just thrown underneath the bed? What sort of state are they in? You don't want to get caught out. So, now's the time to find out where your boots are and get them in gleaming order before we come back. So, what we've got today is a few sets of boots. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how to clean them, how to care for them, just doing some basic maintenance on them. Um, ready for a parade and ready to deploy on our next trip, hopefully to the Brecon Beacons very soon. So, the first thing we're going to look at is preparation. So, what I've got here on the table is a couple of old towels down. If you're playing around with polish and mud, you want towels down. If not, do it outside, okay? Don't go doing this in your mother and father's best front living room um, with shag pile carpet getting polish all over the place. Uh, you won't be flavor of the month. So, old towels down, get the boot. In fact, we'll have a look at this pair first of all. They're not in bad shape on first inspection. Are they? Another pair of black pair, but makes no difference in the contingent whether or not you're wearing black or brown whatsoever. Um, we are phasing out the black, if you will, but if you've still got a pair of black boots, they're perfectly fine. And on first inspection, these boots look absolutely fine, don't they? Let's look a bit closer. So, the soles. Instantly, as soon as my fingers touch the soles here, I can feel stickiness, which is not a good sign. And this tells me that somewhere along the line, this sole has, it has come into contact with some pretty intense heat. Um, you should never, ever put the boots, your boots, or any footwear next to the radiator or open fires or anything like that. You're just asking for problems. Boots should be allowed to dry naturally when they're wet. So looking at this sole here, I can see that the sole itself is split and it's starting to come away. Even though the upper of the boot is in pretty good nick, the sole itself is splitting, it's coming away. Look at that. So this pair has had it. So I'm not gonna go any further with that pair of boots. The sole is, and it's not worth nowadays with the uh, price of boots trying to resole these. They've had it. So let's look at this pair here, or this left-hand boot. This is typical of a boot coming back from a CCF exercise, or one of our exercises anyway. Um, mud and dirt and God knows what else is ingrained all over the boot itself. Now, although I'm using his bare hands, you could put a pair of gloves on if you wished. Um, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna bother for this stage, but looking at this boot, having a good old check over of the sole. No splits anywhere, no cracking of the leather. It's just superficial, great. So there's bags, if I look after this boot, this boot will last for another five, six years easily. First thing I'm going to do, and what a lot of people don't tend to do, is take the laces out. Never try and clean the boot with the laces in. You don't get inside the welts. You won't be able to get inside all the um, lace eyelets. You wanna take all the laces completely out, okay? Very carefully, ensuring that you don't break off the ends of the lace. If you do, it becomes very difficult to re-thread the lace later on. A little bit tricky to get out, which is good. Probably caked in mud. There. Look at the amount of mud that's encased inside the eyelets and also inside the tongue of the boot as well. It's just a haven of nastiness. Okay, so we've got the laces. 
So I do this obviously with the other pair as well. And once both la laces are taken out, uh, I'm gonna get one of these little washing bags. I'm gonna put them inside, zip it up, and then just throw this in the washing machine on a very light and quick wash. Doesn't need anything special. Um, they're not the most robust items on the planet, laces. So just straight in the washing machine, give them a good clean. So what have we got next? One very dirty boot. Now, there's a variety of brushes on the market um, which you could use or which some people use, let's say, um, to get all the mud off. Um, everything from this type of brush, which is fine, nice and, and, um, and soft, all the way through to nail brushes, which is my particular favorite, all the way to something se se um, severe like this. Now, this type of brush, I wouldn't be using this personally. Um, I think this causes more damage than the need to. Um, so this is not a, a particular type of brush that I would use. Nail brushes, something small like this, absolutely fine. In this case, I'm gonna use this one. Um, I'd look at, first of all, just trying to take as much as the surface mud off as I can, gently getting in and out of the eyelets. Just trying to take all the dried mud off I can. Again, if you do this outside, the weather permits, fine. I tend to do this when I come back off exercise before I even wash myself, to be honest with you. Um, I do it outside, set my boots off while I'm still muddy, wet and tired. Give them a good old clean all over. Once you've got all the mud off, I need to give it a good old wash. So for that, I'm gonna take these boots outside and I'm gonna use the tap on the outside of the house. I'll see you in a minute. Right, here we are. I put a bit of water from the outside tap into a bowl. I'm outside, I'm not gonna cause any mess out here. Got my Wellington boots on. I've got the said boot, laces are out, holding it from the inside. If you get any water inside, don't worry too much because the best way to dry that out is by stuffing newspaper and let the boot dry naturally. Like I said earlier on, don't put it near any sources of heat whatsoever. Let the boot dry naturally. So the first thing I'm gonna do, get it into the, straight into the bucket like that. And with my nail brush, gentle circular motion, getting all that mud off making sure that I get inside the tongue of the boot. Like so. Now, no harm at this stage either to do the vibrant sole underneath. Good old clean. Working methodically from the inside to the front, round over the toe cap, doing the tongue inside of the boot. Remember what I said earlier on about the type of brush. It doesn't want to be so soft that you can't get anything off, but it doesn't want to be so stiff that you actually damage the leather, you scratch it, and you've taken off all that polish that you've put on. Make sure you get right in there. You can always tell a boot that's been scrubbed like this and then polished, as opposed to those individuals that think they can hide the mud by putting the polish directly on top, okay? Not mentioning any names. So, do it all clean all the way around. Get inside those eyelets. at all. Give it a bit of a shake. Now what you can do is pat this down with some newspaper um, and just leave it outside or like I say leave it um, by your back door and let it dry naturally. And once it's dry then we'll look at putting some polish on. Okay. Hello again. So moving on to the next stage, um, polishing. Before I actually start to polish the boot that I just cleaned outside which is now dry, I've just noticed that I've got a little nick in the toe cap of my, one of my other pairs of boots. And this happened um, when I caught on a bit of barbed wire. So what I'm gonna do here is do a bit of, quick bit of maintenance using 
bit of Loctite, bit of super glue, very carefully. Now, if you do find that you do need to use a super glue of some type, please make sure you're wearing gloves and you read the instructions. If you're not too sure, ask your parents. So I'm just gonna put a little dob of super glue here on the nick, both sides, close it back up, apply a bit of pressure, sticking already nicely. Like I say, make sure you wear gloves. Okay, and that should be fine. And I probably, I won't be polishing this boot uh, for a while now. Probably leave it a good 12 hours to make sure it's absolutely stuck solid. Okay, so going back to the boot I cleaned outside with the tap and water and the brush. Um, another quick look to make sure there's no visual signs of any type of decay or anything, that the sole is still sound, no cracks. The last thing you want to find is when you're in the middle of the Brecon Beacons, the sole hanging off, oh, there's cracks there in water to seep in, um, can make for a really miserable weekend. So look after the boots, and the boots will look after you. So moving on to putting polish on. What I need is a non-brush, and an off brush. Also need some polish. In this case, I'm gonna use uh, Kiwi Dark Tan, um, which suits the color of the boot. I find personally, um, Kiwi is my preferred, that's my personal preferred choice of polish. I haven't found anything else that comes close. Now, before I start to put the polish onto this, one point for you, um, school shoes. What I teach you today here can be applied to your school shoes, and why not? Um, it's not cool to come to school with dirty shoes, okay? Um, so if you can do these two boots, do it to your shoes, okay? It prolongs the leather, maintains the integrity uh, of the boot itself, and saves your parents some money. They don't have to keep changing your shoes. So, here we go. I put a little bit of screwed up newspaper on the inside. Um, there was a little bit of water crept into the top when I was vigorously cleaning. So that screwed up newspaper will suck up any moisture. I'll leave that inside there. So with my brush, dip into the polish and starting at the back at the top, just small circles, coating the entire boot in the polish. I'm not flicking it anywhere, I'm not doing anything other than small, gentle circles, meticulously covering every leather part of the boot. Now, I know what you're thinking. What happens if I've got a breathable membrane on my boot? I've got some canvas on my boot. Well, if you've got canvas or any type of non-leather material on your boot, don't go covering it with polish, okay? The whole point of that membrane is to allow the boot to breathe. So you don't cover that in polish. I think I've got one here. There you go, I've got a Hague here. This area, don't go covering in polish, okay? So it takes a little bit more time on a boot like this, just to make sure that you get the leather bits and leather bits only. If you get a bit of polish on that membrane, it's not the end of the world, just be careful and try not to. I've unfortunately encountered many occasions where I've had wet boots in the past when I was a young man. So I take my time now to make sure I look after my boots because the boots will look after me. So get that polish all over there. You're keeping the leather nice and supple maintaining its life. Good, that one's done. How long did that take me? Two or three moment, minutes? Come back to this one. I think that's about it. Maybe a bit more on the tongue on the inside there. Open it right up. Right in there. 
Excellent, right. So, boot is now covered in polish. Put the lid back on. And that's all I need to do for at least two to three hours. Okay, I'm gonna let the boot sit here. I'm not gonna put it in for any, near any sources of heat whatsoever. I'm just gonna let it dry naturally, let the wet leather soak in all the oils and the polish. I'm just gonna leave it. Uh, in fact, go off and cook Sunday dinner. Well, here we are back again. So, two or three hours have gone by and one very lovely Sunday dinner. Now I'm gonna use my off brush and just very gently just brush off any residual polish that has not been soaked into the leather and this will turn will start to bring up the boot with a nice shine. Now there are many trains of thought about how how vigorous you should brush polish your boot, whether or not you're going on exercise, whether or not you're going on parade and you're going to use these cover boots for your parade boots. I said to find this, brush it off until it's nice and shiny and leave it at the start, leave it like that if I'm going on a normal parade. However, if I'm going on exercise, once I've brushed polished it off, and I probably wouldn't brush off as much as I normally would, I would use a waterproofing oil to go over the top just to give that a little bit more protection when we go away. So making sure that I get inside all the eyelets. I give the boot a thoroughly good brush polishing. Like this one. So this is one of the ones um, I did earlier on. And in this pair I've put the laces back in and that's absolutely fine. Um, so as you can see, boots nice and shiny all the way around, nice and clean, all ready to go. If I'm gonna go on exercise with this boot, the day before, I would use a water repellent oil, and this one came with actually these boots. And it'd be a simple case of getting a brush or a cloth and putting it on, again, in small circles, leaving it to soak in. And if you wanted to buff it up slightly, you could, but there's no real need to, not if you're gonna go on exercise. Um, it doesn't buff up that well, so I wouldn't be using this sort of oil if I'm just parading on a Wednesday night, um, where I want my boots to look nice and shiny, but like I said, if I was deploying an exercise somewhere, then I would be. Okay. So, it's a Wednesday morning, I'm parading at Cadets, I want to look spick and span. My final touch up for this boot will be this. A little secret weapon. And this is a couple of pairs of old tights. And what I've done, old tights, okay? Don't go robbing them from your mother's drawer. Roll them up into a ball and just give the toe cap just a vigorous buff up. Like so. Don't need to do the whole boot. Just a toe cap. Like that. Okay. What a Bobby Dazzler, eh? And that, my friends, is that. So, if you've got any questions, feel free to send me an email. If not, I expect you to turn up with an immaculately shaped berry and gleaming boots next time we parade, which I'm pretty sure won't be too far away. Take care, stay safe everyone, and I'll see you soon.